Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Superhuman Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Dr. Matt Accurso, and I just want to tell you how thankful I am to have you on today with my very special guest. You know, I want to take a moment to thank all of you out there for the amazing tweets, the texts, the calls, everything else related to the new book I have coming out called Superhuman Entrepreneur. Uh, some of it, some of you showed up for the book signing in New York City, and it just blew me away. I almost fainted. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Speaking of NYC, uh, we have a superhuman entrepreneur right off the streets of New York City today. If you think balancing time is difficult, try throwing in 70 hours of medical school per week, or maybe sometimes even more. Uh, our guest does it all with a seemingly effortless air to him. Check him out on Instagram, training puppy dogs, petting elephants, skydiving, and then automatically feel inferior for your boring life. <laughs> um, all kidding aside, um, I was convicted. I need to pet more elephants, by the way. But uh, he's a fourth year medical student at uh, Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine in New York City. He's from Miami, Florida. Uh, he did his undergraduate at University of Florida, where he also was the captain of the men's volleyball team. So right there, him and I have the same hometown, love the same schools. I mean, it's all coming together here. Uh, he's an entrepreneur and an avid traveler. He's been to over now 28 continent or 28 countries. Uh, he plans to visit every continent by the time he's 30. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the show, Jay Feldman. Jay, how you doing? Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm doing awesome. I'm here in New York City. Again, I thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm a fellow Florida native. Love to hear it. Uh, 70 yeah, hours a week. Very generous. <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know, congrats, by the way, for being in the fourth year. And uh, I feel like this show should just be Dr. Feldman. I don't, I need to, I need to leave the J out. Oh, man. I, I, you know, <laughs> uh, my friends keep, keep doing that, putting the doctor in front of One more year. Just going to take the off and do it right. Gotta yeah. Got to earn it like everyone else. Yeah, man. That's awesome. You know, yeah. one thing I love about you, Jay, is, you know, how, you, you have such a confidence in life about you, you know, what, whatever you do, um, you do it with all of you. And it's clear to see that whether you're with family, whether you're with friends, uh, I love your Instagram page, by the way, it's just full of this love and passion and professionalism. So no doubt you're doing big things in the world, you know, talk a little bit about your story. Like what made you want, cause you, you run a business and now you're in medical school. What got you on this journey? Why are you passionate about being in medicine? And what made you start the business that you're in? Yeah, yeah, so you know, I'm happy to talk about that. And I guess it, it kind of goes back to when I was in high school. Uh, you know, people think entrepreneurs, and people have this drive from day one. And you know, it's, it's definitely not always been like this. You talk to people that I went to high school with, people that knew me back in the day, and you said, fast forward uh, 15 years, you're gonna be here. They, they would not have believed you. When I was in high school, I was I was like a C, D student. I was focused totally on my social life and volleyball. Mm. Volleyball has always been a huge passion. Yeah. But senior year of high school was kind of the turning point. I was actually arrested. And, you know, that, that was kind of a huge shock and awe moment in my life. My, wow. My, yeah, my dad was laid off from his job. We had to move. Uh, they ended up getting divorced. That all, that all happened during my senior year. And so you were, you, were, you were what, like around 18? It was just before Older. my birthday, okay. a month or two before when I was arrested and all of that happened. And wow. That, yeah, you know, that was kind of the turning point. And I didn't, I didn't actually start at University of Florida. I transferred there after two years at Florida Gulf Coast University. Have you, have you even heard of that, that school? I have, yes. I know yeah. people actually doing that as well, transferring like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was an easy school to get into. They took me with the arrest on my record. And yeah. That, that was the point of my life where I'm just like, you know what? I, gotta, I got something to prove to myself. I got something to prove to my family. And wow. I did. Yeah. I, I, I buckled down. I fell in love with medicine. I was a straight A student for two years there. I you know, joined a fraternity. Did, uh, I worked in the emergency room for like 30 hours a week, shadowing doctors, learning as much as I could. And two years mm -hmm. later, I transferred to University of Florida. And that's where I kind of flourished. I, you know, I, I stayed on the pre-med track. I I worked my ass off in the hospital there as an emergency room scribe. Yeah. Took my medical school admissions tests, did really, really well. And then at that point, I took a year off. And like you said, I love to travel. Traveling is, I think, yeah. one of the best things that everyone can do to, to round themselves off as a human being. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 
So I, yeah, we took two months, went to Europe, uh, came back, and I took a year off from, from school. I lived with my, my best friend at the time, Jesse Henry, at uh, Florida State University, and he was the president of the entrepreneurship club there. And that's kind of, I guess, the first person that I owe, that I owe it all to. Shout out to Jesse. Shout out to Jesse Henry right now. <laughs> I'm, this, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of guided me through everything. He found out what my skills were, which was science, obviously, writing. So I, I started taking on clients and marketing. I used to wake up at 6 a.m. every day and put, put business cards on people's cars before they left for class. Uh, tutoring services, writing services. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, eventually the, the clients started to come with all of that that marketing. I didn't, I didn't know anything about digital marketing at the time. It was just wow. kind of flyers and business cards on people's cards. Wow. And yeah, you know, I was tutoring and writing papers all day, every day. And eventually Jesse's like, listen, you need to outsource some of this stuff. You need to hire some people and, you know, focus on the clients. This is a business now. You, you have a business. Mm. So that, that's what it was. It was, you know, it was called the Tutor Chief. And we, we tutored and we helped people with their personal statements, and visions. And that was, that was the first big business. And it's still going, continuing to this day. I'm, uh, I managed it myself for about a year. And, you know, that's kind of when the entrepreneur, like, switch clicked in my brain. I just yeah. kind of happened out of necessity. I, I was just trying to make money as a freelancer and then realized that I had this, this other thing in me. And, you know, worked my ass off on this thing. It became my baby. It became my yeah. new thing. I'm sure you know business. Absolutely. Once you get something off the ground and growing like that, it's like a child. It's, it is. You love it. Yep. Yeah. You pour, your, you pour yourself into it. You know, that's what they say about, you know, the, the, the standard person. Not to say there's anything wrong with, you know, holding a job and, and not necessarily starting your own business. But then on the other side of things, there's the entrepreneur side of things, which I truly believe that all human beings have an entrepreneur element to them. Some have it stronger than others, right? But we're all creative. We all have this eclectic ability to go out and make something happen and make something real and change the world ultimately. And I love your story so far. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing um, what you've been through. I didn't realize that about you. I want to go back to that time because I think this is important for all of us to hear. Go back to that time where you, you, were, you got arrested, your parents got divorced. You know, it's very easy in our lives to label ourselves as something, especially when challenges happen, because then it gets into our nervous system that we are that person and will never change. We're never going to be able to get past that person. What did you do in your head? I mean, obviously you, you pulled the belt straps up and you made it happen. And now you're a successful med student. You're almost done with medical school. You're going to have your own practice one day coming from getting arrested and the challenges you face to this now, what was, was there a switch in your head that happened that made you think, you know what, I'm not a product of all that stuff. I'm more than that. What happened there? Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just labeling yourself. Like when, when something like that happens, you get labeled by, by everybody, your family, yeah. friends, and people, people start to give up on you. And that, that's definitely, I guess, the turning point when one of two things can happen. You can usually either get your shit together, pull the belt straps up, like you said, or, you know, you can, you can fall under that label and let it, let it define you. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that, that was never me. I, I, I mean, thank God that I, it was the first and not the, not the latter of those things. And yeah. I think it's, it's all the better for it. It's, those, those, it's things like that that shape you into who you are. And, yeah. you know, as, as horrible as that whole experience was, I think in the end, you know, you become grateful for it because it led to this. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It's always crazy to me how you know, those things as horrible as they were, like you said, was the path that paved that way for you to be here today. I think it's fascinating. Um, did you have something that you would think about something that would drive you? Like, I mean, at, at that time, were you thinking, Hey, I want to be a medical school, so I got to clean up my act. Or were you just thinking, you know, I'm never going to do that again. Cause I was so miserable. Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, more, more the second one. And yeah. also what happened, I went to work for my dad's uh, new company who wasn't, it was working for, a, I think, a, a trucking company. And I was a collections agent for, for two months, sitting at a desk, call, cold calling companies. I'm well, not cold calling, but asking for, asking for money from them. And I don't yeah. know if you ever had a job like that. That'll, that'll scare you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the realism. I've had jobs like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think working at a job like that too, that, that thought that's, yeah. that's still been in my mind sitting for in sure. calls for, you know, $8 an hour. I remember doing carpentry work when I was uh, in my teens and basically my, my mom actually uh, was like, you're going to get a job and this is, this is what you're going to do. And a guy was willing to hire this little teenager. I remember doing that for a straight year and thinking, I never want to go back to this again. I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay away from it. Exactly. Yeah. And that you're right. There's nothing like an experience like that to make you think, right? Yep, definitely. So uh, I want to, I want to, yeah. So I want to talk about, uh, you know, now you've, you've gone from challenge. Now you're living your purpose. Um, are there people that you're intentional about surrounding yourself with? to lift you up, to speak positivity in your life? And are, are there, and you can, you can say those people, you cannot say those people, but then, and then is there the opposite as well? Are there, are there people that you had to separate from in order to really fulfill your dreams? So yeah, both of those things. And I think for anyone listening, that's, that's I think one of the most important things you can do as a, as a yeah. person, especially growing up, is surround yourself with like-minded people, with people that are going to be a positive influence. Uh, going back to Jesse Henry, he did a TED Talk on filling, filling other people's buckets. Like there's plenty of, plenty of water. If you take from other people's buckets, you know, you're just kind of hurting everyone. But if you fill everyone's buckets, everyone, everyone benefits. And yeah. I don't, I'm not explaining that as well as he does, but it's the principle of having good people around you, having productive people around you, people that are going to, you know, can keep you motivated, going to tell you to work instead of go drinking. Uh, you know, and, and the, the opposite of that, the people that are holding you back, the people that are, you know, negative, with not, not really with the aspirations that you have. And that and the bigger your dreams and the harder you work, the more people that are going to be on the other side trying to tell you you can't do it, telling you those dreams aren't a reality. Uh, making fun of you for putting yourself out there on Instagram and trying to, you know, make something of yourself and do something yeah. with what you are. So, yeah, those people, I think you definitely have to X out of your life as soon as possible. Just yeah. Gonna... yeah, you know, there's a mentor of mine that calls it. It's interesting. You have the bucket, that bucket methodology that you were talking about. And a mentor of mine talks about crabs in a bucket that oftentimes the people you used to roll with a while back are, are some of the ones that try to grab you and pull you back down. So when you're trying to get out, when you're starting to become great, sometimes people don't like that. They don't like that feeling. It makes people feel inferior, at least the ones that are, are not looking at it from a healthy perspective. Yeah. And I think that's so huge what you're saying, because, you know, in order to climb out, in order to be great, in order to keep excelling and learning and growing, you have to tune it out. And obviously you're doing that, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're doing it on Instagram in amazing ways. You're doing it in your business. You're doing it in school. Um, let's talk about your morning. A lot of people love to hear about morning routines. You obviously have a packed schedule, um, medical school, business, relationships, all that stuff. What is, you're living in, do you live in the heart of New York City? I do. Okay. Months. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, I got to come see you next time I'm up. I, lo I love it in that area. Uh, so what does that look like for you? Are you an early riser? I've become an early riser over the years. It wasn't always yeah. like, but now it's 6, six 7 a.m. When I have something going on, it's usually 6 a.m. And okay. yeah, I guess going into the morning routine, I guess that, that's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, right downstairs, we have a fairway and a juice place. I used to make my own juice, but every morning I, go, I get a juice. Uh, I need my juice. I do my stretching. Obviously, the normal stuff. I'm not a, not a morning shower or anything. I yeah. walk the dog. Honestly, the, the, I think the best part about getting the dog is in the morning. You wake up and he's just on your bed. He, he spreads out, yawns. And you yeah. take, take him out for a walk. It's just like a great way to start your day. I yeah. take him for a walk, I get my juice, and then, you know, I start, to, I start working. Yeah. Immediately. I, I usually don't eat breakfast for a few hours. Uh, I don't know if that's considered intermittent fasting because I have my juice, but yeah. the juice holds me over, and I think it's, a, you know, a powerful way to start your morning. I've yeah. never been a morning gym guy. Always wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm, uh, I used to be. Hardcore. When I was when I was running a clinic full time in Nashville, I used to be, and now I'm more of an afternoon guy. I love afternoons. I love paddle boarding in the afternoons. It's like something that I do often now. But uh, I totally see what you mean with the dog and everything as well, because 
now more, more of my morning than anything is relaxing meditation, you know, being at peace with the, with the silence. I love silence now. And like, it's a very special time for me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was, I was getting into meditation before I got the puppy, the puppy ruined, ruined the, <laughs> I think as I do, I still do plan to get back into it. I love the research on it. I think yeah. the walk is a type of meditative thing, especially just for clearing your head with the dog. Yeah. Just that, that 10 minutes in the morning where you, you know, you don't think about work or stress. Yep. So key. Yeah. Do you go ever, do you ever hit central park or anything like that? Yeah. Not every day. We're, we're not yeah. too close. We have yeah. our own park. But yeah, we love central park. Moses loves it. All the yeah. people love Moses. <laughs> how could you not he's adorable i mean yeah, yeah. if anybody if anybody wants to see moses he's probably he's handling coming. his business right now <laughs> he's coming Here's he's coming him. okay but uh moses has got his own intros on on instagram yeah. as well look at that i mean just handsome handsome yeah. moses has probably got a lot of ladies around town in new york city <laughs> yeah adorable but uh yeah, he's he's already popular on Instagram. Look how relaxed he looks. He's just so chill. He's like you, Jay. He's like you, man. He's I mean, he's like like father like son. You know, they say people are uh, the dogs are the replicas of the people. You see yep. them walking down the street and they're the same. I, I like to think me and Moses are, are are the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love I love I love his face. He's so regal, you know? Oh, he is. He's got a nice fluffy face. He does. Good, he does. I got lucky with him. So I want to just continuing on that. So you, you know, you have your juice, you take Moses for a walk. Um, is there any supplements? Like, are you into any supplements right now? Do you kind of stay away from supplements? What's your take on that? Vitamin supplements. I actually yeah. have a bookcase on Monday through Friday, like old person bookcase, and they're filled with vitamin supplements. I have about six or seven things that I take every day. Uh, I can go into them. I take a vitamin C pill. I take yeah. a vitamin D. I take fish oil. I take a probiotic. I take turmeric. What else is in there? I take zinc, yeah. a multivitamin. I think that's it. It might be nice. Missing, but yeah, I, I, I love the vitamins, the supplements. And you know, I, I think they work. I, I think <laughs> right. they, they can't be doing anything bad. I, right. I eat every day. I've been doing it for years. Yeah. I, I definitely think it's, a, I think it's a great thing. Especially for sure. Throw in your routine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen placebo. It's an actual documentary and they, they, they basically test these things on people. They test, you know, if someone takes a supplement, do they perform better? If they, if someone has a, has a, uh, a mild surgery, do they perform better? Very interesting documentary. But, uh, but I, I know exactly what you're saying about that. You know, there's, there are some supplements that I do really well on. Like I do well on cordyceps, any, any mushroom cordyceps uh, supplement. I, I physically feel like, I'm in the zone longer in the morning when I'm trying to work or when I'm trying to study or whatever it is. Uh, I definitely feel the effects of it. Things like vitamin D, fish oil. You're right. It's, you're kind of just, you're taking it cause you're like, well, there's some research out there that says omega threes are beneficial. Yeah. Maybe so, long term cardiac. You know, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And that's good, you know, and, and keeping the immune system high, obviously, yeah. you know, you, you've been through some tough seasons. You said it's calming down a little bit of med school. Um, you, you've taken some boards, gotten some flat tires on the way. Um, you know, what's, what, give, us your, give us your best tips right now, techniques, when balancing life. Are there, are there certain things that you do? Do you have like, when it comes to your schedule, do you use Google Calendar? Do you use your phone a lot? And then what does that look like? Are you really structured like minute by minute? Or are you kind of just like a I mean, I know with school and all that, you do have to be structured to a point, but when you're living your daily life, are you still, are you pretty military about your time? You know, no, no, I've never been. I've never been the guy who puts everything in his planner. Yeah. Um, you have to start, you know, being like that once you get to a point, especially in business where yeah. you have meetings every day and things like that. For that, I do use Google Calendar. I don't know if you, I have a whiteboard. I'm, I just came in yesterday. I, every place I've ever lived, I had a big old whiteboard and that's yeah. kind of of my life i've got my i've got my notes in my phone my reminders i've got my notes on my computer and then when things need to get done every week they go on the whiteboard and i cross them off as i go along nice um, i wish nice. i was more organized you know with the planners and stuff but, yeah um, my biggest piece of advice is surround yourself with what you need to do 
and learn how to hold yourself to to the things that you say you're going to do. And there's no there's no real way to do that. I mean, there's there, I've seen apps with incentives and things that like you know you get you have to donate a dollar for every time you don't complete a task or or something like that. Yeah. There, no one no one has a you know a perfect way to hold yourself accountable for the things that you should do. Yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. On you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you're, you, you obviously from, from your, the lifestyle you live and what you portray to people online, you, you, you stay healthy, you stay fit, you know, talk, talk a little bit about how you stay in shape and what your diet looks like right now. Uh, so let's see, staying in shape. I've been going to the gym every day since high school. Okay. You're a gym guy. So you get in there afternoons. Um, but yeah, late afternoon, usually I go with my two roommates, Ben and Adam, who are also fourth year medical students with me and my best friends. Cool. So that, having, having a good gym buddy to, to motivate you not only to go there, but to you know, push harder, lift more weights. I think yeah. that's a lot. So we, we go probably four or five times a week now, uh, mostly heavy lifting. And as far as cardio, I, I hate, hate running on the treadmill. Wish I liked it. Wish I liked jogging outside. It's way too hot. Yeah. Uh, basketball. <laughs> I think if you can nice. get it, yeah, into a sport, we've got a, an awesome basketball court right next door, right outside. Awesome. Yeah, we love doing that, running around, playing ball. Yeah, so you, you try to make that part of your regimen each week? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I think that's important, keeping it fun, right? You know, I mean, staying fit can be fun. You can still get ripped. You can still do all that stuff and change it up. Definitely. When you're in the gym, you're, and you, you, so you work out with these, two, these other two guys, are you guys – doing high intensity stuff like you said heavy so are you you're, you're focusing on like the six to eight rep repetition type stuff yeah usually six to eight reps three or four sets uh we usually do uh maybe three or four exercises per muscle group uh we'll do one month you know buys tries chest or chest try back by shoulders legs and then a month later we'll switch it up uh, the muscle confusion theory and do some push pull yeah do some body weight stuff and you know it, it keeps it fun it keeps it interesting yeah uh, fitness has always been a huge thing for me and an outlet for all the stress i mean yeah so, studying and stuff uh, it's another place to clear your head you go in there and there's just there's just the weights and your friends and yeah what would you say to someone what would you say to someone that's that's uh you know in that position right now where they're maybe in, in medical school or, you know, running a business, you know, raising kids, you know, just living life and having all these things and, and going after their dream. What, what's, what's been some key things that you've learned to keep you afloat, to keep you sharp, to keep you on track and, and not keep you from burning out? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing, like I just said, is the outlets. You need those, those moments of, of, of clarity of just you know clearing your head and you need to find the time the, the other thing everyone says is where where do you find the time there's not enough time in the day to do these things mm. say yes there is there, there absolutely is i mean I, I don't sleep more than five six hours a night but if yeah. you, you want to do something you can make it work you can you can cut out the the one hour binge watch you or two or three hours of binge watching you do every night you can wake up an hour earlier you can you know speed up your meal prep time or mm. Find a, find a way to eat healthier and cut out some cooking time. There's ways. And I, I've gotten really good over the years at ba making my routine efficient. Everything that I do is efficient. So that I do have the time to you know, sit down and work, go to the gym, walk my dog in the morning. You, you can make it work. Yeah. You can absolutely make it work. If you sit down and figure out a way to, you can. There's yeah. time. 100% agree. I, did, I used to do this thing where I had a war plan. called it a war plan, which was literally I mapped out – this is when I was, you know, full into the clinic, you know, and just, and, and, and then some, uh, some school stuff as well. And, uh, I remember mapping out really every minute of my day and I'm not, I'm not a, a really structured time person either. I don't like to be, you know, I like to have my freedom. Like when I go on vacations, it's not full of like activities. I like to just relax and hang out. But yeah. when I was doing this, I started to see how much time I was wasting. Like you're saying, you know, with the binge watching or, Maybe even just convincing yourself there's not enough time in the day. And then you start going back and looking at the minutes and you're like, well, I have three hours during my week, maybe more, where I could be doing things to work toward my dream. You know, because yeah. I think a lot of times we talk about 
our culture specifically, if you listen to the news and you kind of listen to the mainstream stuff going on, it's like, if you're, if you have a job and you're, you know, and you're, you're operating in that realm, then there's no more time in your day, no more time in your week to actually focus and work on your dream. And that's just not true. Like you said. Yeah. So I hope everybody out there is hearing, hearing that if you're in that place, you know, just, just know that this is a fourth year medical student who's running a very successful business. And if you go on social media, you can see, you know, Jay is posting all these things and um, you can kind of see, you know, it's a, it's a snapshot of his life. There's obviously a lot more to Jay, but for the most part, you can see that you're balancing very well, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for all the medical students out there, I just want to add, because they say, you know, they study 12, 14 hours a day year round. There's, there's so much material that they throw at you, especially the school gives you material. Then there's the standardized material that you have to study. Yeah. I probably studied about a, a half to three quarters as much as most people. And I did better than most just by figuring out what material is most important and mm. what the last. And you don't, I mean, you don't need to study every piece of paper that's given to you. Just like in, in life, you don't have to read everything that's given to you. You need to learn how to segment the information that you're taking in. I don't watch the news. I mean, I don't watch sports. You need to, you need to pick and choose what information you, you intake. Yeah. 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 What you, what you value, right. Is going to stay on the top of your priority list. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, what you're passionate about as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, I mean, to, to me, to me, it's like, you're a doctor. I know you have to get the diploma and you have to do all that other stuff, but it's like, that's coming around the corner for you. Um, what is something that you're passionate about as these types of roles that people out there listening uh, could glean from? Passionate about in terms of like just life? Was, yeah, in terms of life. Like what's something that you're passionate about that entrepreneurs out there listening could benefit from? Uh, I think that the, my biggest passion is becoming a well-rounded person and trying to find happiness. Traveling is a huge passion. Just things mm -hmm. that'll increase your substance as a person as opposed to, you know, pouring your whole self into medicine, which a lot of people do and it's admirable and it's great. They spend, you know, all day, every day in the lab and we, we need them. But mm -hmm. for me, life's about so much more than that. It's about, you know, learning languages, and traveling the world, and ex experiencing as much as you can, and, you know, setting yourself up for true happiness. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. It's hard to be passionate about more than that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's at the end of the day, right? At, the, at our core, we're humans who, who desire love, we desire happiness, we desire all those, all those feelings. And you're exactly right. You know, operating in that, life that's going to drive you more into those things uh is so important 100 percent agree the way there i mean that's the most you can do yeah that's right this is a this is an odd question jay and you might have to think about this for a second but i'm going to throw it at you if you had one billboard that the entire world could see what would it say one billboard that the entire world could say yeah you know, my motto and my kind of my, my mantra for, for, you know, keeping, keeping this level of, level of uh, productivity that I like to do is the same. They actually told us on the first day of medical school when they were talking about the international medical students that when you're sleeping and when you're, you know, sticking around, the kids over there, they're, they're studying 20 hours a day. They're not sleeping. They want it just, they want it more than you. And so I think it, the billboard would say, well, you know, when you're sleeping, the, the others are trying to take what you have. Mm. Work. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It reminds me a lot. It reminds me a lot of uh, my athlete days. We would, we would, we tend to think like that. Like when you're, you know, when you're not practicing, that guy's practicing. Yeah. You know, when you're not training, that guy's training when you're and so, yeah, it's, it's, and then it's a motivating thought when it's really in there and ingrained. It is. Do you find that you're, you, you tie a lot of your, drive into your athletic days when you used to captain the volleyball team and be involved in volleyball? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was the same type of drive, but just focused differently. I mm. think you know, it's always kind of, kind of been there and it, it's definitely evolved over the years, but yeah, I mean, back in the day I used to come home and hit the ball against the wall to myself is for hours at a time. I built a court in my backyard. You know, it's, it's the same with PVC pipes and 
Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you had. <laughs> yeah, whatever you had you made it work yeah like, absolutely it's it's related it's the same it's evolved obviously but yeah i've always had some kind of a fire and thank god for it yeah man that's awesome so what creates the most peace in your life the most peace in my life mm -hmm. um you know it's after it's traveling first of all is it's the thought of the impending trip when i'm doing something really hard uh, time with my dog, but more than anything, it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, going to that, that foreign country. It's the excitement of, I'm going to work this hard for this many months. And then I get to go, you know, a month abroad and scuba dive and play with elephants. Yeah. And you know, if peace in your life. If you want to experience true peace in your life, spend a day with elephants. It was I bet. absolutely incredible. And you know, that's, those are the thoughts and times that bring me real peace. Yeah. I love that. I, uh, I got to do that in Sri Lanka last year. I hosted a retreat out there and you're exactly right. There is such a peace and a power. It's this amazing peace and power thing with yeah. elephants. And then the, there's the, the gentleness yeah. of this massive beast, you know, that could literally crush you in a second, but you're playing with them. You know, it's pretty yeah. neat. Giving them that, yeah. It's everyone, everyone should experience that. That was, that was life changing. That's cool. Yeah. What do you like to do in your free time? You know, I know you've, you've talked about some things, but like, what's the one thing if you could do it all the time, what would you do in your free time? Keep Play it, volleyball. keep it, keep it G rated. No, okay. <laughs> volleyball. If I had the choice between that other thing and volleyball, it's volleyball. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is definitely a man's show right here. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Really great. But yeah, volleyball is, it was always a, that was my life for one, one point, and there's nothing that I enjoyed doing more than you know, playing a beach volleyball tournament or going to compete in an indoor tournament. And that's unfortunately been one of the, the sacrifices that I had to make over the past few years of medical school in New York City, but eventually I would love to get back into it. But that's yeah. always been my favorite pastime, favorite hobby. Whenever I get the chance, I, I go and play. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, what was the last habit you formed and why? So the most recent habit that I formed mm -hmm. is, uh, and I, I like to pick and choose my habits. Uh, you know, I did the research. What are entrepreneurs doing in the morning? What can I, what can I try and do? And the one that I stuck with was no curtains. Let the, let the sun wake you up at 7 a.m. Love so, it. Yeah, 7, 8 a.m. If you have no curtains and you have big windows, you're not sleeping in, or at least you're not. not. No, me neither. 100% man, I cannot sleep in when there's light coming in. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually extremely light sensitive where there's even, sometimes in my hotel where there's the little fire alarm light, I actually have to take electrical tape and cover that stuff because I'll, I'll wake up to it. Oh man. Crazy yeah. enough, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 37 a.m. rolls around and the light starts pouring in, then I, I think that's, that's a habit that everyone should do, no curtains. If you want to wake it. up early, yeah, and then wake up refreshed to the sun, it's yeah. natural. Yeah, I think that's my most recent and best habit. Yep. Do you living in New York City the way you do? Are you do you find that uh, you get outside a lot? Like, do you ever get do you get get to get your bare feet on the ground or anything like that living in New York City? That's definitely one of the sacrifices of the city too. You know, For sure. You take your feet off and run in the grasses when you go to Central Park, I and mean, that's yep. it. So I, I mean, I try and do it every week, but sometimes you don't. Yeah. Moses. Yeah. <laughs> Moses gets it all the time. <laughs> I wish I had a, a backyard and a pool for him. We keep him happy. We go to the dog park every day. And yeah, cool. Eat good food. He's a happy dog. Yeah. Well, when you have houses all over the world, you'll be able to, and you're flying all over the place, you'll be able to yeah. ground yourself more, right? <laughs> um, what books do you recommend right now? Maybe one, ones that you're reading now or ones that you've read before that you could tell our listeners about? Honestly, uh, the only book that I've read other than medical school textbooks over the past maybe 10, five, 10 years yeah. is uh, audiobooks. But there's one audiobook that I would totally recommend, but I've actually listened to it twice. That's The Five Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I don't yeah. Know, do it yourself. It's amazing. A friend recommended it to me and it blew my mind. I was just like, yes, yes, this is exactly good. my thought process put into a book with awesome advice. And I, I need to do this. Yep. Yeah, love it. wanting to break free of the nine to five and this is it. Yep. The there, was a, there was a gift that I would give every, whenever I would meet a young entrepreneur 
and I had the chance to mentor him at all or her, I would send that book. That would be the first gift that I would ever give. It's that powerful. Yeah. It, it, it motivates you just to want to take the next step if anything else. Yeah. 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 If you could pick one action step for our listeners to take from you and I's conversation, what would it be? Uh, one action step to take. I think it would be, I mean, I think delaying what you want to do in life because, you know, the, a better time is coming. Um, you know, you're waiting for something to happen and change, for circumstances to change. Forget all of that. I mean, it's the, you're always going to find an excuse yeah. to delay, delay making, that, making those changes. So the action step that I want you to do is sit down right now and what is the first step that you need to take to, to make those things happen for yourself, whether it be to, you know, escape the nine to five, travel, uh, get back into school. Things might, things are going to change, but there's always going to be obstacles. So yep. do it, sit down, figure it out and take the first step right now. Yep. That's, that's my biggest piece of advice. And everyone's like, should I wait for this? Should I wait? Like this is coming soon. Like the money and like now, whatever it is, You're right. take the steps now. You're right. One yeah. thing we try to convince ourselves is, as human beings is that we don't ever have enough resources, right? But we have everything at our fingertips right now. I mean, we live in an amazing time in history where we can make anything happen that we want, right? I mean, Sorry. it's like, this is it. The, all of my three companies have been zero overhead companies. They're all services that I've le learned to do myself, learned to teach people to do. You can start a business with no money. I mean, whoever yeah. said you need you know, $100,000 to open a business. It's not like that anymore. You know, the internet's yeah. made everything possible, and YouTube has made everything possible. Yeah, you know, I can't tell you the amount of skills I've learned from watching YouTube videos. <laughs> so true. Well, so there. true. When I first, when I bought my first house way back in the day, when I was just going into college, and uh, I fixed my whole house up off YouTube. I watched YouTube videos. Took yeah. a backhoe to my front yard, fixed my roof that was leaking. It's I've, crazy. I myself a handy person now thanks to you thanks to youtube <laughs> thanks youtube there's a plug <laughs> so remind me again jay when are when are you officially graduated uh so i officially graduate next fall so it's about wow. from now. and then i can start calling myself uh dr feldman well uh, well remind me we're, we're gonna have our contacts and uh i'm gonna put that in my calendar and i'm gonna take you out to dinner okay so on me that's going to be a celebration of you and i um that's big we'll look back on this episode and be like remember remember when you were gonna say, say saying you're gonna graduate in fall and now it's here it happens like that right it's amazing I mean, the first three years happen like that don't they yeah yes yeah, i'm assuming it's gonna go even faster yes it will it will well yeah. i just want to i want to uh i want to just let you know man that i'm uh, grateful for you i'm grateful for how you show up in the world um i'm grateful that you you went from that kid who was arrested going through a divorced home. I've been there by the way. And um, you brush the dust off and uh, you're changing the world. And so I just want to thank you for stepping up in a way and, uh, and doing that. And I want to let everybody else out there know, uh, check out Jay Feldman on his Instagram page. Um, any, any other websites, Jay, that, that you could throw out that to people want to learn more about you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm actually in the process of making one right now, but okay. at the moment, no, I think the Instagram page is as much as, as much information and motivation as I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's definitely inspiring. It's inspiring to me when I saw it. And, um, and I will say, you know, um, this guy's one to watch everybody watch this guy, watch this space. He's going to do huge things out in the world. I'm a little threatened actually. He might actually, you know, I mean, do things that I'm not able to do, but no, here's no. the thing. Do it together. Exactly. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's all about lifting each other up, seeing each other do great things. Um, that's why the show exists. That's why Jay's out there doing what he's doing today. Um, and I, so I know that uh, the more you watch him, the, the more you're going to see um, what greatness is. So to everybody out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Jay, thanks for being on with us right now. Thank you so much for having me. This was a ton of fun. Man. Yeah, man, it really was. To everybody out there, continue to be superhuman. You have no boundaries right now, just so you know. There are no boundaries in your life. Those mountains melt like wax when you can actually see and have a perspective that your purpose on earth is greater than your circumstances. So go rock it. Thank you for spending time with us again. I'll see you all next time.